You know, and this is this is interesting because there's also this kind of philosophical question, and you suge- you addressed this a little bit already. You know, are these things that should be decided federally, or are these things that should be decided at the state level? Well, I, certainly, I think you can point to Nebraska and say what a great job we've done in conservation here in Nebraska. And again, I, I don't think conservation is a bad word. It's not. But this program is so onerous for the, the cost of it is so onerous for our folks in rural communities that I don't think the Biden administration really understands what they propose. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of a consistent theme that, at least from my perspective, the Biden administration doesn't really seem to understand what life in the Midwest is like. He demonstrated that when he was talking in his uh, one of his first speeches, where he was talking about the pandemic, and he hoped that we could gather in small groups at the Fourth of July this year. We were doing that last year, Mr. President. He said we hoped that you know schools could be you know fully in person in classrooms. I'm like, yeah, we were doing that last year too. It'd be nice if the Biden administration would get out of their little bubble in D.C. and come see what's going on here in the Midwest and see what life is like here so that they could understand some of the implications of their policy that they're trying to enforce. And so, and you've also mentioned a little bit earlier that there's this kind of obvious, what sounded like an obvious cost to Nebraskans, you know, and that's presumably based on the only way that you see this could play out. What is, what is the cost? Well, the cost is if you take away 30% of our land that's mostly being used for agricultural purposes right now, you're taking away the ability for people's livelihood. You're going to drive up property taxes on everybody. Uh, you're going to make it more difficult for young farmers and ranchers to get into the business. It's already very difficult because of the high cost of getting into agriculture. When you think about owning land and the equipment and all that, it's very difficult for young people to get in already. So it's going to drive all those costs up. And ultimately then what you do is you drive up the cost of food. Well, that's that's kind of my other question, actually, because presumably this is a, you know, a major program to address, I guess, what uh, is described as a kind of environmental crisis, right, to help provide solutions to that. I think it's the twinned crises of climate change and biodiversity loss that it seeks to but it seeks to counteract, I guess. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, again, uh, one of the things with regard to is to talk about the biodiversity. Where they're pulling from that is not scientific. Uh, it's a Center for American Progress report from August of 2019. And they hired somebody to put together a model to say there's going to be a million species going extinct in the coming decades, no timeline, a third of the wildlife in the United States, and that we're losing a football field of land in the United States every 30 seconds. There's so much wrong with that. First of all, models are subject to whatever assumptions you put in. And trust me, after fighting this pandemic, I know how wrong models can be. We all do around the world. We saw some of the models and how wrong they were. So we know models are subject to assumptions. And with regard to some of the other things, if you actually do the math on that football field worth of land every 30 seconds, by 2030, that comes out to about 11 million acres. Well, if you're worried about 11 million acres, why are you trying to grab 440 million acres? See, again, the math on this just doesn't work out. The way the things they talk about these things, they put up all these nice platitudes, things that everybody want to do. Of course we want to conserve. But then you actually dig into it and you do the math, and you're like, this math doesn't work. And you're, you know, obviously you're an advocate for small government. Are you concerned this is uh, you know, expansion of government? Well, I expect that that's one of the ways that they're going to actually try to do this, is through trying to expand their authority, to put more regulations on private property owners, to reduce and restrict their rights. We saw this under the Obama administration. The Obama administration, through the waters of the U.S., tried to expand their authority unlawfully. And Nebraska was one of the states that took them to court successfully, got an injunction against the rules being put in place. And that means a judge believes you're going to be right if you get an injunction. And ultimately, the rule was withdrawn under the Trump administration and rewritten so it would remain lawful. So we're going to be continuing to watch the Biden administration, if they try to do things unlawful, we will take them back to court. And we want, again, we're asking, at this point, we're just asking for more information and we're getting very little. And uh, so, and what are your constituents telling you about this? What's the general, what's what's the public saying? Well, I'm, again, spending most of my time in rural communities because that's who's going to be mostly impacted. And overwhelmingly, they oppose this because they understand, because they live in these communities, what it would mean to undermine the property tax base, to make it harder for young people to get into agriculture. They already know it's hard for, on these things. And in fact, 
uh, when we've been doing our town halls in some very small communities, we haven't had less than 100 people show up because people are concerned about this and they want to find out more.